This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Steve Brown. The Age of Reason by Thomas Paine. Part 2, Section 7. Could we permit ourselves to suppose that the Almighty would distinguish any nation of people by the name of His chosen people? We must suppose that people to have been an example to all the rest of the world of the purest piety and humility, and not such a nation of ruffians and cutthroats as the ancient Jews were, a people who corrupted by and copying after such monsters and impostors as Moses and Aaron, Joshua, Samuel, and David, had distinguished themselves above all others on the face of the known earth for barbarity and wickedness. If we will not stubbornly shut our eyes and steal our hearts, it is impossible not to see, in spite of all that long-established superstition imposes upon the mind, that the flattering appellation of his chosen people is no other than a lie which the priests and leaders of the Jews had invented to cover the baseness of their own characters, and which Christian priests, sometimes as corrupt and often as cruel, have professed to believe. The two books of Chronicles are a repetition of the same crimes but the history is broken in several places by the author leaving out the reign of some of their kings. And in this, as well as in that of kings, there is such a frequent transition from kings of Judah to kings of Israel and from kings of Israel to kings of Judah that the narrative is obscure in the reading. In the same book, the history sometimes contradicts itself. For example, in the second book of Kings, chapter 1, verse 17, we are told, but rather in ambiguous terms, that after the death of Ahaziah, king of Israel, Jehoram, or Joram, who was of the house of Ahab, reigned in his stead in the second year of Jehoram, or Jorah, son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and in chapter 8, verse 16 of the same book, it is said, And in the fifth year of Joram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, Jehoshaphat being then king of Judah, Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, began to reign. That is, one chapter says Joram of Judah began to reign in the second year of Joram of Israel, and the other chapter says that Joram of Israel began to reign in the fifth year of Joram of Judah. Several of the most extraordinary matters related in one history, as having happened during the reign of such and such of their kings, are not to be found in the other, in relating the reign of the same king. For example, the two first rival kings after the death of Solomon were Rehoboam or Jeroboam, and in 1 Kings chapter 12 and 13, an account is given of Jeroboam making an offering of burnt incense, and that a man, who was there called a man of God, cried out against the altar, chapter 13, verse 2. O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord, Behold, a child shall be born in the house of David, Hosea by the name, and upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. Verse 4 And it came to pass, when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him, and his hand which he put out against him dried up, so that he could not pull it in again to him. 
one would think that such an extraordinary case as this, which is spoken of as a judgment, happening to the chief of one of the parties, and that of the first moment of the separation of the Israelites into two nations, would, if it had been true, have been recorded in both histories. But though men in latter times have believed all that the prophets have said unto him, it does not appear that these prophets or historians believed each other. They knew each other too well. A long account also is given in Kings about Elijah. It runs through several chapters and concludes with telling 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 11. And it come to pass as they, Elijah and Elisha, went on and talked that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into the heaven. Hum, this the author of Chronicles, miraculous as the story is, makes no mention of, though he mentions Elijah by name. Neither does he say anything of the story related in the second chapter of the same book of Kings, of a parcel of children calling Elisha bald head, bald head, and that this man of God, verse 24, turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the name of the Lord. And there came forth two she-bears out of the wood and tore forty and two children of them. He also passes over in silence the story told to Kings chapter 13 that when they were burying a man in the sepulchre where Elisha had been buried, it happened that the dead man, as they were letting him down, verse 21, touched the bones of Elisha, and he, the dead man, revived and stood upon his feet. The story does not tell us whether they buried the man, notwithstanding he revived and stood upon his feet, or drew him up again. Upon all these stories the writer of Chronicles is as silent as any writer of the present day who did not choose to be accused of lying, or at least of romancing, would be about stories of the same kind. But however these two historians may differ from each other with respect to the tales related by either, they are silent alike with respect to those men styled prophets whose writings fill up the latter part of the Bible. Isaiah, who lived in the time of Hezekiah, is mentioned in Kings and again in Chronicles when these historians are speaking of that reign, but except in one or two instances at most, and those very slightly, none of the rest are so much as spoken of, or even their existence hinted at, although, according to the Bible chronology, they lived within the time those histories were written, some of their long before. If those prophets, as they are called, were men of such importance in their day as the compilers of the Bible and priests and commentators have since represented them to be, how can it be accounted for that not one of these histories should say anything about them? The history in the books of Kings and of Chronicles is brought forward, as I have already said, to the year 588 before Christ. It will, therefore, be proper to examine which of these prophets lived before that period. Here follows a table of all the prophets, with the times in which they lived before Christ, according to the chronology affixed to the first chapter of each of the books of the prophets, and also of the number of years they lived before the books of Kings and Chronicles were written. Here is shown the table of the prophets with the names of the prophet in the first column. The time in which they lived before Christ, years before Christ being the second column, and also before the books of Kings, years before Kings and Chronicles, the third column, and observations being the fourth column. Isaiah, 760 years, 
172 years mentioned. Jeremiah, 629 years, 41 years, mentioned only in the last two chapters of Chronicles. Ezekiel, 595 years, 7 years, not mentioned. Daniel, 607 years, 19 years, not mentioned. Hosea, 785 years, 97 years, not mentioned. Joel, 800 years, 212 years, not mentioned. Amos, 787 years, 199 years, not mentioned. Jonah, 862 years, 274 years, see footnote. Micah, 750 years, 162 years, not mentioned. Nahum, 713 years, 125 years, not mentioned. Habakkuk, 620 years, 38 years, not mentioned. Zephaniah, 630 years, 42 years, not mentioned. Haggai, Zechariah, Malichi, Obadiah, after the year 588. This table is either not very honorable for the Bible historians or not very honorable for the Bible prophets, and I leave to priests and commentators who are very learned in little things to settle the point of etiquette between the two and to assign a reason why the authors of Kings and Chronicles have treated those prophets whom, in the former part of the Age of Reason, I have considered as poets with as much degrading silence as any historian of the present day would treat Peter Pinder. Footnote In 2 Kings chapter 24, verse 25, the name of Jonah is mentioned on account of the restoration of a tract of land by Jeroboam, but nothing further is said of him, nor is any allusion made to the book of Jonah, nor to his expedition to Nineveh, nor to his encounter with the whale. End footnote. End of section 7.